Now, moving on to the last section of this neuromuscular disorder, that is the regional surface for polyomyelitis. Why I'm saying is that polyomyelitis is kind of a disease can affect almost any uh, muscle group and any different of the type of muscles. So depending upon what muscles have been affected, whether they were muscle of the shoulder girdle, whether they are muscle which were causing elbow and extent, uh, extension of flexion, whether the small finger muscles of the hand or the fingers, or there was muscle of the pelvic girdle which was actually resulting in abductor lurch or something sometimes these paralysis can be devastating so in this section we'll be going through how to actually uh, yeah, overview a patient of polymyelitis and uh, rule out what is exactly wrong with the patient and what could be done for example we're going through the regional survey for shoulder elbow forearm the wrist hand and hip knee and foot almost any region can be affected with the osteomyelitis now the important thing is that uh, it actually requires sometimes uh, a very uh, approach of an orthopedic surgeon in such a way that he or she should be able to communicate to the patient about what is going to be uh, the most likely success of the surgery which he or she is going to be performing on the patient. Sometimes even the tendon transfer does not uh, gives us a very good uh, outcome and we eventually may have to resort to orthodesis. So the, the chance of a failure of a surgery should be communicated to the patient before the surgery because there is every chance because muscles are not working properly and the tendon which has been transferred may also, will, uh, may also not work properly in case uh, later on there may be a post polio syndrome. So eventually orthodesis may be required. In shoulder, uh, usually the most important thing is restoring the shoulder abduction. If the deltoid is functioning properly, it's kind of a blessing, but if it's not, then probably we have to transfer a tendon for the shoulder abduction. But if we cannot do that or if not possible, other muscles of the shoulder girdle are also paralyzed, then the next option is actually to go for shoulder orthodesis. And orthodesing a glenohumeral joint is probably more effective for this patient rather than doing a kind of a tendon transfer. Treatment is often concentrated on lower limbs because usually these lower limb pathologies can be corrected easily with uh, tendon transfers but usually for the upper limb we mainly resort to orthodesis of shoulder, elbow and wrist joint. If it's elbow and forearm the main thing is elbows uh, function is mandatory for uh, it's a, uh, a good upper limb function but if uh, elbow function cannot be restored then the probably option is to go for orthodesis of the elbow and the wrist joint the order is usually that we go for uh, orthodesis elbow first then the wrist and then lastly the shoulder joint then again it's important is the whether it's a dominant hand or non-dominant hand we have to ask the patient whether he or she eats with the right hand or the left hand if it's right hand then we may have to uh, arthritis or fuse the joints in such a way that he or she is able to eat from his right hand and if it is uh, uh, other hand other limb can be used actually for hygiene purposes wrist and finger flexors may be a weak whether we can do uh, uh, some kind of a tendon transfer if it's possible very good if it's not then probably arthritis is always the the last resort. Usually patients may have a pronation contracture which may be released but orthodesis is eventually uh, required usually of the elbow to correct this pronation. There may be a uh, transposing flexor carpi a narrow tendon for example may be required for the ulnar deviation which may be uh, which may be needed in case of uh, uh, before doing the wrist orthodesis. There may be a loss of supination and uh, with pronation contracture but in case of release of this uh, uh, contracture this may result in some degree of uh, supination but eventually we may have to resort to complete orthodesis of the elbow joint. Now coming to the hand and eventually the uh, wrist joint the most important function is of the thumb and uh, this pinch and grip of this is important. If the patient is able to uh, make a grip or a fist, then probably the hand function is normal. But why we need, we need a pinch so that the patient is able to at least hold something in his uh, hand. As you can appreciate it over here in this diagram, that this patient is actually holding 
uh, an egg between the two fingers. This pinch function is very important. And why this grip function is important? Because here she can use this the grip function of the non-dominant hand for hygiene purposes or can lift something for with his, his hand. Actually, usually it's improved by orthodesis. Finger movement sometimes is restorable, but most of the time we have to go for orthodesis. Flexors, uh, superficialis transfer is actually done only in case there is no flexion for the pinch function of the thumb. Coming to the hip, as you can see, appreciate over here in this diagram, there's a false acetabulum, the, this leg is short, it's going up. This kind of surgery is done in which this is actually removed. The part, this is actually brought down with a prosthesis in place so that the limb length discrepancy can be addressed. This is called a suitor's muscle slide operation. This is a division for the fixed abduction contractures. Usually associated with pelvic obliquity and scoliosis as well which may be need, need uh, addressing as well. Sometimes it can be addressed with osteotomies, but sometimes you may have to go for fusion or spinal fusion is probably the ultimate answer to these few things. There may be improved muscle imbalance, which could be by use of a tendon transfers, but sometimes the uh, tendons are not available from the transfers. And then probably the next option is always orthodesis. There may be intertrochanteric or subtrochanteric osteotomies which can be done so that the various valgus malalignment as well as limb shortening can be addressed. Sometimes the bone transport can be done in the femoral level as well. Depending upon whether acetabulum is shallow or there was associated uh, increased dislocation, deepening of the acetabulum and acetabuloplasty may be performed in these patients. But usually the options are always very limited because the muscle imbalance and, uh, is not good enough for these long bony surgeries. Coming to the knee, uh, usually knees, uh, they may be associated with flexion contractures. The patients may have some kind of hyperextension contractures as well. Usually knee ankle foot arthrosis sometimes is given just so that the, uh, if there is mild disability, but if there is excessive S disability, may require a supracondylar extension type of osteotomy of the fever so that uh, increased flexion contracture can be uh, treated. There may be flexor and extensor transfers, but provided whether there are no pre extensors uh, are weak and flexors are good enough so they can be transferred. For example, if cords are weak and hamstrings are good, then hamstrings can tra transfer in place of the cords. But if the both are weak, then probably we are left with the only option that is the knee orthodesis. Last is uh, supracondylar reflection osteotomy for genericurbatum, which may also be can also be done if there is too much genericurbatum. Coming to the foot, there may be equines deformities and uh, plantar flexion contractures which could be done initially with ankle foot orthosis, a simple drop foot splint because if they are flexible. But if they become rigid, then probably some kind of a surgery such as slot moon graft into the vertical group may be required. There may be a uh, triple orthodesis, it may be indicated in which the teronavicular calcaneal cuba joint is actually fused. Or uh, there may be elmsal uh, trilateral operation which may be required for patellar maltracking. But usually this is always associated with muscle imbalance. And lastly, in, there may be associated problems such as hyperflexion or uh, uh, hyperextension of the toes, which can be dealt with intraphalangeal joints, orthodesis. Eventually, the, in most of the cases, we may have to eventually go for orthodesis because we we may go for tendon transfer. But the problem with these uh, polyomyelitis patients is that the tendons are not always available for transport and sometimes even the tendon is transferred is usually not in results in a surgical success. So that if to uh, for allow them to carry out normal daily activities of daily living, usually the orthodesis is always the best choice of option. As we have gone through the polymyelitis, although polymyelitis is rare nowadays has almost been eradicated, but we are uh, seeing now the problem associated with polio and the long term complications such as contractures, deformity, shortening. And as an orthopedic surgeon, we may have to deal with the long term complications rather than short term. Thank you very much. Keep watching scardia.com.